What's up, people? So, how many times have you been cruising around in your spaceship, cruising around through space, whipping shit, thinking, hmm, if only I knew how to make this sound in massive, I would be a lot happier. So, here I am to show you how to make such a sound. And it's all part of the uh, one of the presets I made for this trap presets pack for massive, which will be out on Loop Masters soonish. Um, yeah, I thought I'd show you how I made it because there's a pretty cool idea in it. Um, it's a pretty simple preset, but it's got quite like a novel idea in it, which I thought I'd show you because it's quite cool, basically. And uh, not sure how, however many people are actually doing it too. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. So we're using Massive, which is the best place to make massive sounds. Um, they don't make small sounds, they only make big sounds. Massive sounds. And so, what do you do? So I'm assuming you're reasonably kind of au fait with Massive. Um, so how did I make this particular noise? Oh, I should probably tell you what it sounds like. It sounds a bit like this. And then you got all these kind of macro knobs as well, so like... Pretty rad. I'll try not to get too distracted. So, cool sound. How is it made? So first thing we're gonna wanna gonna wanna gonna 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 wanna do is go to OSC, short for oscillators. And just like I how I always say, you're gonna go to restart via a gate, restart via the gate, and make sure it's turned on with that button there. Make sure it's ticked. And if you don't know what that button does, click it. If you do know what it does, you'll know if you want to click it or not. Look it up in the manual, it's hard to explain what it does. Anyway, that'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, then what we're gonna wanna do is go to voicing over here. Basically determines how many kind of instances of the oscillators we're generating. And then we're gonna go to unisolo. Um, sounds a bit like unicorns and sonogram. Uh, it's nothing to do with those two things. It basically yeah, determines how many instances of the oscillators we're making. Gonna wanna drag this number one up to the number eight. And then we've got loads of stuff going on, loads of the oscillators happening. That'll make it sound a bit cooler. Um, then we're going to want to turn on this unisono spread pitch cutoff um, and then drag this slider to the right a bit. That'll basically mean that each instance of the oscillator, and we have eight of them as we can see over here, each instance will be kind of detuned from each other very slightly. That'll give it kind of a cool kind of detuned kind of vibe. And then when you combine that with this on button here, next to pan position, um, and then this kind of knobby thing, slider thing, fader thing over to the left means that all the instances of the kind of oscillators are all kind of different sides and shit. So when you can combine that with the subtle detuning, it makes the thing sound wide and lots of them. So it sound kind of thick and wide. It's always a good place to start. That's what she said. Um, cool, yeah. So as far as the oscillators, got something pretty basic, just a standard score, which is what I call square dash saw. Um, to the left is square, to the right is saw. Um, I've assigned one of the macro knobs, called it Tombra One, very fancy. Um, just so you can kind of change the vibe. But um, yeah, you can choose pretty much anything. I just chose score, because it's uh, nice and thick. Um, that kind of sets the basis for it, but we've got loads of them going on. And then that's kind of the basic setup. And then we have the cool thing. Um, so the cool thing is this fourth envelope. And now I chose fourth because it's also the envelope that's attached to the amplitude. Pretty good coincidence. And then what I've basically done is, first of all, let's click number four. Let's see what kind of radicalness I've got going on. Uh, it's got this mental thing. And so now this is, got to remember, got to kind of keep a visualization of what's going on now. So we've got the fourth amplitude, or the fourth envelope attached to the amplitude of the wave. And we've also got the fourth envelope attached to the pitch. So we've got it going up a whole octave. So basically the uh, as this goes up, it takes the pitch up and then down again. And then the super cool bit is we've got it attached to the size of this reverb effect of Chuck Tom, which uh, basically gives it this cool kind of spacey, spacey vibe. 
and uh, yeah, basically discovered it um, by playing around with the kind of the size knob on the reverb effect as uh, as I was playing a sound, and then it's something to do with the way that uh, native instruments kind of set up their reverb effect that when you modulate that size it just sounds really cool as, as it kind of merges through the different sizes but yeah it's pretty cool it's got this one envelope doing all these three things and then when you combine them together it makes this cool sound um yeah and then how did i get this cool shape well check out my video on envelopes in massive i think i did a video on it if you want more detail about how it works but basically, yeah, I've got the de delay all the way down, got the attack all the way down, got the level all the way down. Um, that basically brings this first section to here. Um, and then I've got the level, kind of the sustain level all the way up, which brings it up to here. I've um, got the uh, de decay set to whatever time I like, which I've also mapped to a macro knob so I can just tweak it to adjust the character of the sound as and when I like. It's always a good idea to do this, just so you can kind of ignore decisions about the character of a sound till later um, but just kind of set up the sound initially without making too many fixed decisions uh, call it something like attack so you can remember what it is and then I got this S loop um, set up uh, so yeah check out my video on looping and shit for envelopes and massive for more detail but yeah basically got loop set to one got two different um, what's it called loop loopy bits uh, 8 and 18, and then I've got this morph wheel kind of morphing between them so we can kind of determine more of the character with this uh, seventh macro. But it's always good whenever you've got kind of options to be made when you're setting up a sound just to stick a macro knob on it so you can fine tune it later. Um, and then this S loop is the length of the S loop, which is also set to another, another macro knob, uh, which is wob length, very coolly named. It's pretty cool. And then level down, release down as well, which doesn't really matter. And got a bit of dimension expander action going on, going into the reverb as well. Just to give it an extra bit of character, a bit of width, all that kind of cool stuff. It makes it bigger. It's called dimension expander, self-explanatory. Um, and again, another, another macro knob on the size because macro knobs are fun. And I got told to map eight of them, so I did a bit more than normal. Also got a vibrato going on. Um, so if we go to oscillator, we can see, I'm pretty sure that's just the default vibrato setting. Um, if you've got the latest massive, when you do file new sound, it sticks in a vibrato, vibrato macro, just to kind of get you get you off the ground. And then we've got another macro knob, um, yeah, just on the reverb color, which is almost like the thickness. Although there is a density one, the color is kind of like the thickness. That's the way I like to think of it. But until you play about with that knob, it's hard to describe exactly what it does. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, basically, the key point behind it, uh, if you've kind of, if, you, if that didn't make any sense to you, is first of all, we're going to want to make sure we have loads of instances of kind of the oscillators. So make sure your voicing tab is set up in a good way. So you've got a thick kind of sound to begin with. And then the kind of the bit that's kind of unique and novel to this particular space whip sound is mapping this one envelope to the amplitude, the pitch, and the size of the reverb all at the same time. And yeah, it just has kind of a nice relationship all bouncing off each other. It can always do other cool stuff as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's one of the cooler sounds um, I've made by experimenting recently. Um, I have made a lot of sounds, but this one's kind of a, a nice, different way to look at things because it's quite heavily based on the effects um, in Massive and using the cool cool features of Massage, no, uh, not Massage, uh, the cool features of Massive, which is the way you can just map envelopes and LFOs to almost anything. So yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, I'm not giving this away for free, so don't ask. And but yeah, I should have the, the preset pack that uh, kind of uses this preset available some stage. I'm sure hopefully I remember to post a link to it on this video when it actually comes out. But I've pretty much given you enough to construct it yourself. So don't get all pissed at me if I haven't given this away for free because you can basically construct it yourself if you spend five minutes of your lives doing it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been Multiplier. This has been a comparatively concise video at 10 minutes long. And yeah, hit me up messages or whatever. If if you're bored or if you're not bored, stop what you're doing, send me a message. 
so I can ignore it or not ignore it. Depends how good the message is. And yeah, cool stuff. Enjoy making sounds massive. And hopefully at least this has motivated you to get a bit more experimental with your sound design because there's so much you can do nowadays. It's almost mad if you're coming up with the same now, same sounds as everyone else. Cool stuff. Bye.